College Algebra, Section 5.2, Number 56, Newton's Method. This is for finding zeros if you know a close starting point. Newton said that if you have x of n plus 1, that's the next x that you're going to use, <coughs> using this x of n, the current x, minus the polynomial at that point, x of n, over the derivative of that polynomial at x of n. <coughs> so we can set up a table. Um, how many times will we do this? Well, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is x sub n? That's the choice you make, and then it drives itself after that. And what is x sub n plus 1? Okay, our polynomial is p of x, which is x cubed minus 7x minus 40. <coughs> Goodness. The derivative... You don't know yet, but they do give you a formula, the derivative for polynomials. You take this exponent 3 and bring it down and multiply. Write the x and then subtract 1 from that exponent, so you get a 2. Now this is an exponent 1, so 1 times 7, a negative 7, is a negative 7. And then when you subtract 1 from 1, you get 0, and x to the 0 is just a constant. And any constant's derivative is zero. So this is our derivative. Now they had us, first of all, find some of these things. Um, P of 5, which is using P would be 5 to the third minus 7 times 5 minus 40, which would equal, you can put that in your calculator, you get 50. P of a negative 3, you can also put this in your calculator. A negative 3 cubed minus 7 times a negative 3 minus 40, and you get a negative 46. Now, how do you get those easily? Well, we're going to use our calculator, which we're going to help ourselves, I guess, other ways with this calculator clear this out. In this calculator, in y1, we're going to put the p of x, x cubed minus 7x minus 40. And in y2, we're going to put the derivative, 3x squared minus 7. Now, when you want to find the value of y1, which is our p of x, let me write that down here just so. So this is y1. <coughs> and of course, I moved it so it could be And this is our y2 on the calculator. So I just need to get y1 of 5. To get y1, you click on vars, right arrow to y vars. Number 1 is function, and number 1 is y1 of 5. Put that in parentheses, and it calculates that to do y1 of a negative 3, you can do it two different ways here. If you do a second enter, it'll bring back the previous command, and then you can put in a negative 3 and close that parentheses instead of 5. There's the negative 46. But the best thing about this is when we perform our Newton's method on this stuff. Um, why would this be these two points give us a positive and a negative. So this part B tells us between a 5 and a negative 3 is a 0. Polynomials don't have any holes in them, so it's got to connect these two points at 5 and negative 3. The 5, 50, and negative 3, negative 46. Somehow it's got to cross the x-axis. Um, so if you think of this, 
5 is up here at 50. Negative 3 is here at negative 46. Some place it's got to cross. And that's the 0 that we're looking for. So we're going to follow Newton's method. We're going to put on the screen. First of all, we're going to start with 5. Take 5 and stow it into x. That will give me the 5. That's where we're going to start. So the x sub 1 is a 5. Now we got to figure out what x sub n plus 1 is. That would be 5 minus p of 5 divided by p prime of 5, or the derivative. And we can do that on our calculator all in once. We can take x sub n is just our x minus y1 of x divided by y2 of x. And then comes an important step here. That answer becomes our new x sub n. Because this is a 1, x sub 1 is 5, x sub 2 we calculate. And we put that over here in the x sub 2 spot. So we need to store that into x. Then, when we hit this again, it'll take the new x, subtract that uh, y1 of that new x, divided by the y2 of the new x, and put it into x again, which will be the x sub 3. So this little trick gives us a way of doing this. So, um, x sub 2 is 4 point, we need uh, 4 decimal places, it said, so 5 places. 2, 6, 4, 7, 1. 4.26471. But that goes here also. 26471. Now, that has been saved into X. When you just press Enter, it runs the previous command. So now this X has the 4.26471. When I run it again, it gives me a new number. 4.10256. But that's also my x sub 3. Now I calculate the next one. And you don't need to recall that with second enter. You can just press enter. 4.09492. That also goes here. And then calculate it again. 4.09490. And that goes here also. Let's calculate it again, and what you find is, at least to these five decimal places, we get the same answer. We've found a zero, a root. So this is really part C. D, we're going to skip for a moment because I want to be able to use this right away. For E, um, we're supposed to use our graphing utility, which is our graphing calculator. Now remember, X is this value. So it's a little bit redundant. If I have um, Y of X, so I'm going to put in this bars, y bars, function y1, 
of x, which holds that last value so I don't have to type it in, what do I get? Zero. So I've used this calculator to confirm that my guess, 5, which was using Newton's method, gets me this 4.094904, and that gives me a zero, at least to those five decimal places. <coughs> So you can use your crabbing calculator to verify that. And I guess for my four steps, because there are so many steps before this, you can just say that this was done on the calculator. Verified on calculator. One other way to find that without going through Newton's method is to Remember, we're using y1 as the function we're interested in. Second trace, if you want to find out where the zero is, that's number two. Now, we better get a picture, though, that puts us between five and negative three. So my window is going to go from a negative three up to five. And then I'm going to do this zero. Okay, and now let's go back to this Y and get, you can press enter to unhighlight the SQL sign and then do a zoom fit to fit your function within that negative three to five. So we said, what was it, 4.09, really close to four. How do we find that with our calculator and not Newton's method? Second trace, zero. And we're going to do the left bound, which is something close. See that X there, sort of an X. To the left of that crossing point, press Enter. The right bound to go to the right of that crossing point, press Enter. For a guess, get close to that crossing point, press Enter. And your y value is 0 when x is 4.094904. So, verify it on the calculator. This should help you with some of those other problems, and it's sort of fun.